Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. Today I'm going to do a project that has been on my list for a very long time. I'll be making miniature lights and lamps. Um, I've been inspired by Yelena Day, who is another miniature maker. I hope I said her name right. Um, I will put a link to her channel in the description box below. She makes these beautiful miniature lamps and lights. I was able to go to my local hobby store and purchase these KNS metal shapes. They're like copper straws. Uh, they're easy to bend. They're bendable and shapeable. And this is what I'll be using to actually install the wire to the lights. Um, I'm going to be talking about all this stuff as I'm working so that you can see what these things do, how they work. Um, but I purchased a few different shapes. The store that I went to is mostly H, O, and N scale for like train models and boats and RC cars and stuff like that. But they had these and I was able to get them. Uh, they were only a few bucks a piece. I wasn't sure what size I really needed. So I purchased a few different ones so I didn't have to go back. Um, I also have some fairy lights and someone gave me a box of these. These are just battery operated. Tiny friends, you can cut these into pieces and cut the lights off of them and use them in the same manner that I am going to be doing today. And uh, when you cut them off, they look like this. Now the chip has a coating over it. I'm not sure if it's a resin or hot glue, but it is definitely coated over the chip. Um, I purchased these wired lights. Uh, these are also called nano chip lights. I purchased a few different colors and sizes off of Timu. This is what they look like. I have white and yellow. I have uh, three different sizes or I have a few different ones. Um, I have these ones as well. Uh, you can hook these up to a 9 volt battery. You can hook them up to a coin cell battery, which is what I'll be doing with these lights. And you can hook multiple lights up to one battery just by connecting the corresponding wires to the corresponding part on the battery. So uh, we'll talk about that as I go along as well. Uh, but you just put the positive with positive, negative with negative, and there you have it. It lights up. The fairy lights don't really have a negative and positive. You just go ahead and put attach them. Uh, the red is always positive is what my understanding is, and then the negative is either black or another color. A black, blue, I've seen other colors as well, but you just, like I said, Positive with positive, negative with negative. Same with the nine volt. If you if you have electric already installed and you're using the plugs, you can just um, wire the plugs to the corresponding parts of these wires and then plug them into your box. So you can hook them up that way as well. I'm going to be going over a website that uh, also sells these chip lights, these nano lights. And they also sell connectors and switches and battery holders. So I do have some battery holders coming in, which you'll be able to put the cell battery into the holder and then connect the wires to their corresponding parts. And there's an on and off switch. So once I get those connectors in, I'll be able to hook these lights up and put them into place. So for now, I'm just going to build them. I'll show you what they look like after I put them together and turn them on uh, with the battery. And then I'll be installing them once I get those connectors and switches. Um, I'll put that link in the description box below. It's called Evan Designs. And those connectors are only like $2. They're only a couple bucks. I purchased like six for $20 and that included the shipping. So very inexpensive. Um, I have some of these 
copper or not copper brass metal leaves i'm not sure if i'll be using them they're very easy to bend um i have fished through all my little tidbits my antique buttons and all the good stuff my beads and all the things that i'm going to need to actually put these pieces together and i could not find a bag a huge bag of antique buttons that i found in a thrift store but tiny friends i found them after i made all the lamps and lights so i pulled out some things out of that bag for future uses because I will be making more lamps and lights for the house but today I'm just gonna focus on the sewing room so I'll be making three lights and I'll be revamping one lamp that I purchased from a miniature store so um, here's some of the things that I've pulled out this is gonna take some time for me to put some of these ideas together to make some designs. So I'm just showing you a few things right now. You'll see the chaos in a little bit. <laughs> and I'm gonna take some time to think about how I want these lamps to look. But Yelena has inspired me so much to create one of my own and also some other lamps that I've had in my head. So we'll talk about everything that I'm working with, how everything works, what you can do, and go from there. I know um, her videos are really great, but she's not explaining what she's doing. She's working with music in the background. Um, her lamps are gorgeous beautiful pieces. I did ask her what she used to hook the wires up. She told me she used the coin cell batteries. Uh, the coin cell batteries I'm using today are three volt. They're 20, let's see, they are 2032, but there's lots of different sizes. But these are the ones that were recommended on the website. Evan designs that I purchased the connectors to. Uh, there's lots of different numbers. I'm not sure what the differences are, but you can use a three volt, you can use a nine volt, 12 volt. Uh, these nano chip lights uh, can go to higher volts as well. And like I said, you can hook multiple lights to one battery. So uh, that's pretty cool if you're if your wires are long enough where you can spread them around, um, I'm unfortunately going to be needing separate batteries because my wires are not as long. I don't know. We'll see when I install. The wires that I purchased, the connectors and the holders are 8-inch wires. You can get 4-inch wires for the same price. And you can also get extension pieces for a dollar more that will make your cord even longer. Okay, so here are some of the antique buttons that I've been collecting over time. Um, I, Like I said, I have a huge bag that I couldn't find, but I do have now. And I also found my seed beads <laughs> that I was looking for while I'm on the subject of missing things. Um, I just place things when I clean up and I forget where I place them. So um, if I'm not using them on the regular I forget where they are um, but here are some of the buttons uh, I just I love collecting antique metal buttons or vintage buttons they make great bases for lamps and ashtrays standing ashtrays I've used them for in the past uh, which I might do a video on how I made my antique retro or vintage retro ashtrays the standing ones um, that used to be in every household, but I used these buttons. This button is the only one I have in here, and it's, I can't tell if it's from the 60s or the 40s or something like that, but it's got a woman's head on it, and she looks like she's either from the 60s or maybe possibly from the 40s. I love this button. It kind of reminds me of a Scooby-Doo, one of the girls from Scooby-Doo, uh, but it is the only one I have that came in one of these bags that I purchased. 
Um, but again, this is just some of the chaos that goes along with creating these miniature lamps that I'm gonna build. Uh, so I'm going to move on and begin this process because it's going to get pretty chaotic and you will see what I mean. Okay, so I have already shaped this one, but I'm going to show you uh, a little bit later how you can do that. I just used a handle to one of my cutters, the one that looks like the screwdriver there in red. Um, I'm using the smallest shape that I have, the smallest tube. This one is actually 1.57 millimeters. So 1.57 or 1.57, however you want to say it, millimeters. It's number 8125 on the package. And this is the smallest one that I purchased. And right now I'm just playing with some ideas, trying to get, a, you know, a direction to go in. And I think I'm headed on I'm headed, I'm headed to a good start. Uh, I am definitely going to use these beads on this one. This is the lamp that was inspired by Elena's. Um, but I am going to build some of my own that have been in my head that I've been wanting to do. Um, so this is going to be kind of like a tulip lamp. Um, I do have a tulip lamp that I purchased from the miniature store, and you'll see that in a little bit. But this is some of the chaos. It gets worse, but this is some of it. And uh, <laughs> it is very hard to come up with some designs when I have this many and more pieces to uh, look through and pick up. So it can get really difficult. Um, especially because I don't have some of the tinier bead spacers that I would like to have because I've used them on other projects in the past. Uh, but um, here is the wire and right now I'm just playing around. I'm going to fish it through uh, the tube to see how it kind of goes together. So right now I'm just twisting the ends together so that I can put it through some of these pieces. Now this is a piece that I purchased specifically to create a lamp. These beads here, these metal beads, um, I purchased off of Timu and I won't be able to use these today for the pieces that I'll be making, but possibly in the future, I think they may be more sufficient to use as some sort of hanging lamps. Um, so Maybe later on I can use these pieces for those. But right now you see me just trying to figure out how I want the lamp to look, putting pieces together to see what will look right. Uh, and this is what you have to do. And tiny friends, get in there and just do it because you're going to come up with so many designs as you're uh, playing and trying and fitting and all of this grunt work is very necessary for ideas to come about in your head. Uh, as I went through this process, I began to get all these ideas that came into play. So it's very important to just dive right in. Just dive right in. You, these ideas are going to come to you. I promise you they're going to come. I had no idea what I was going to do in the beginning how I was going to make these lamps. So this is a crucial part of creating. So just dump out what you have, fish through what you have, and start putting pieces together and you'll see how they look. And then ideas will start to come to you and you'll get it. Your miniature vision will be able to come to life. So I encourage you all to do that. Just get in there and go for it. Wing it. Most of my projects are, I'm winging it, you know. Just get in there and do it. So I'm going to move on because it's going to get a little more hectic than this. And again, I'll be discussing more about these pieces and parts that I'm using, uh, the metal shapes as I'm going along so that you can learn everything that I've learned so far just from this project. A little bit of research uh, was definitely in need, uh, but I think I have 
definitely got enough research and knowledge to continue on creating more lamps and lights of my own. Okay, so I have cut this tube with my wire cutters. Now you can cut them different ways. There's a tool that KNS uh, puts out that you can use. You can use a razor saw. I just used my cutters. And what happens is the end will pinch close. And I freaked out a little bit. I had no idea how I was going to cut these without pinching those ends closed. But then I started sanding the end. So you can see here, I'm just sanding the end and the opening started to come too. So you can use wire cutters, go ahead, cut your pieces with the wire cutters and then take a little file or a high grit sand paper or block and start sanding that end, sand the sides around it to get those sharp points off and your opening will come back. So no worries, no need to panic like I did. Um, I thought for sure this was a lost cause. I was going to have to purchase an additional tool. And I just started sanding to say, hey, let's see what happens. So you can sand these copper tubes and you can see the hole is right back. So I thought, oh my gosh, I had a breakthrough. I can proceed with this project without have, having to purchase additional tools. So that was one key point that I've learned creating these lamps and working with these metal shapes. Um, so I'm again, just try fitting and I'm still trying to use that metal uh, bead. I really want to use that so bad, but I decided later on, I will probably be able to use those as hanging lights or some sort. Okay, so these are the cheap flimsy lights I purchased off of Tibu. And uh, these are really small. They're, they would make really great lights for a bathroom or a hallway, um, but definitely on the wall. Uh, I'm just lighting it up. You can light these lights up in the same manner. You can hook them up to a coin cell. You can hook them up to a nine volt. You can wire them up to a plug. If you have an electrical box for your house and then plug in the plug to the box. Um, but I'm just showing you that if you purchase lights off a of Timu, you can hook them up in the same way. Uh, right now I was thinking, Maybe I'll just take off the tulip shade off of this light and use it on my lamp. And then I remembered I had an extra tulip shade. It's a frosted glass one that I took off of a lamp that actually uh, went to the wall sconce with the bare bulb that I have on the wall in the sewing room next to the closet. I will not be lighting that light up. Uh, that light was just put up on the wall for decor, but I have that tulip lampshade, so I will be using that. So I'm going to get that out. Okay, so I pulled out the frosted glass tulip shade, and I also pulled out the lamp or the tulip lamp that I purchased. This is the tulip lamp. It's a battery operated. You can see it's got the little switch that turns it on and off. And I'm just going to add a few pieces to this. I'm going to add some leaves and a pull chain. So uh, that's all this little light will need. Uh, but going back to the one I'm working on, I couldn't believe I forgot I had this. Um, so this is the piece I'll be using. And right now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to make it look, what am I going to put on it, uh, how am I going to do this, right? That's all part of the game. So uh, I'm going to figure this out and come back once I have some sort of idea for all of my lamps and be able to go from there and the process is going to go a little bit faster as I'm working through this.
So I'm still just trying to figure it out, tiny friends. <laughs> but I'm definitely using this shade for my tulip inspired lamp from Yelena. Okay, tiny friends, I got everything figured out. One of the lamps I'm going to make is a standing lamp, and that's going to go over by in the corner by the folding screen. I'm going to use this Ready Whip can, cap that went with a can, to the can, and a piece of lace that I trimmed off that already had kind of like a curved shape. So I'm going to wrap it around this top. Uh, I have it stabled with a rubber band. I'm going to use some fabric stiff. I'm going to dip it in the fabric stiff and set it aside to dry and that will harden my lace to create a shade. So while that's drying, um, I decided to pull out my hot glue gun and start coating these chips and create little light bulbs for inside of the lamp. And I don't know if this illuminates the light, but nonetheless, they'll look like little light bulbs inside the lamp. While I was doing this, I got this idea to uh, execute an idea that I've had for a light that I've been wanting, which is too expensive to purchase online. So here I am beginning to create that light. And that is a bare bulb light bulb hanging from the ceiling on a wire. So I'm beginning the process of that and I'm super excited to show you what this looks like in the end. So it takes some time to roll it around and shape it so that the glue doesn't dry in a funny shape form. So when you're doing something like this, you just want to take your time and kind of roll that wire around while the glue is hot so that it doesn't set in a misshaped form that you don't want. So while this is drying, I'm gonna come back to that when it's done to show you what that looks like. Uh, so that's gonna be one of the lights as well. Um, I have this pretty plastic vintage button I'm gonna make to look like metal. And this is gonna be the top part of the standing lamp that the shade is actually gonna connect to. So I'm going to give it a base coat of black acrylic and then I'm going to set that aside to let it dry and come back to that as well. Okay, so I'm going to slow down just for this. This is the light bulb uh, that will be the bare bulb hanging from the ceiling. This is what it looks like. I am so in love with this piece um, in the end and what it looks like. Uh, I have a bead spacer that is perfect to sit on the top for the screw part of the bulb. I'm going to be adding that on. I'm also going to do a little work to the wire to make it look like one copper wire piece. So here is the bead spacer. It's really little, but it looks just like the top part of a light bulb. And I'm just fishing the wire through it. Um, I don't need to glue this on because the light bulb actually fits nice and snug inside of it. So I'm just going to push it right in and tighten it right up. And this is what it looks like. I'm also going to add a pull chain to this as well. Uh, but the light chip that I used is yellow. And I'm going to turn it on just to show you what it looks like. And I'm super excited that I was able to make this because, like I said, um, it was a pretty expensive light online that was not top on my list. So uh, realizing that I could make this was a huge breakthrough for me and, in the end, one of my favorite pieces. So I'll turn this on just so you can see what it actually looks like and that it still works even though it's coated with the hot glue. And there it is. I love it. Wait till you see the final, the, the finish, the ending. I, I can't even talk, I'm so excited about it. Okay, so I'm gonna speed things up again and keep moving on. And I'm gonna continue with this little tulip lamp that I purchased. Okay, moving along and speeding things up. I'm using this filigree uh, bead spacer because it has smaller leaves on it and has three leaves. So I'm just cutting these pieces off 
and I'm going to be gluing them onto the pole of the lamp. Um, I'm going to use my Aline's jewelry and metal glue and I'm going to take this micro little tiny chain and just dip it in my Mod Podge and black acrylic mixture just on the ends just so that there's a little black piece to pull it. And later on, I actually move over to a slightly larger chain because I couldn't fit the jump ring through one of the links. So not a problem. I just had to redo it. Uh, so I have bent, slightly bent the leaves just a little bit so that I can have something to attach the pole to. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'll use my glue to attach them. Once these are on, I'll slow it down just to give you a better look and then move on to the next step. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm not sure how well you can see it right now, but you will definitely get a closer look in the end. All this needs now is a little pull chain. Okay, so I'm using this, these colored beads and I pulled out a chalk pastel stick to frost the tulip shade because I wanted to kind of match with the beads and just tie it all in together. So I'm just lighting it up to make sure that it's still going to show a nice frosted teal tint for my little button and I have a little bead as well. I'm just going to dab it with a sponge and metallic antique gold and this will make it look like metal and kind of just tie that lamp piece together with the base. I know I'm zooming super fast. Uh, my lampshade is dry so I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to use some fabric tack for this. But before I put that on, I'm going to just dull down a little bit of that white. So I'm just shadowing it with chalk pastel, giving it a light brush just to tone that down some. And I know you can't see it really well here, but you'll be able to see it much better in the end. So I'm doing both sides of this. And then I'm going to add it to that button with some fabric tack. Now, uh, one side of this is going to be shorter and I'm just going to put that part in the back and that's because this is how long the piece was. Um, so I couldn't cut it any longer. Uh, but that's okay because you won't really notice it too much. So I'm just tacking that close together. And now I have a lampshade. Um, I'm going to add some trim to this later on just to complete the look. I'm going to glue this little bead right on top. I'm going to let that sit. And I'm using my um, quick grip for this. So that's what the top shade will look like. Okay, I'm slowing this down again just to talk a little bit more about these metal shapes. Now, the larger the rod, uh, the harder it is to bend. So, I can't bend this one freely. Now, one of the bending options is to heat it up, which will soften it and make it easy to bend. But it will also lose its color. And I kind of want to keep the brass color. Uh, it will end up changing black and blue and I don't want to lose the color so I decided to take a smaller piece shape it like the hook and just slide it inside and that works out perfectly so I already started uh, bending this one this is the smallest one and I just wanted to show you what I was doing so I'm here I am out of the frame right <laughs> but I used my handle for my craft knife and I just bent it around that. Now, I'm doing some damage control because when I first began to bend this, it didn't come out as smooth. So it's got a few dents and looks a little bit jacked up, like it's been banged around, which 
probably wouldn't be too bad since everything in the Josephine house is pretty old. But I want this to be as smooth as I can get it. So I'm going to work on this, but I'm going to go back to a fast mode. Okay, so to begin with, I'm just going to thread the wire through the top part and then through the rod. And um, it's not that difficult. I'm going to glue the bead to the rod. And then I'm going to begin building the base. And I'm starting with the smallest bead and I'm going down... Um, I want the beads to line up with the bottom of the rod. I don't want the rod to poke through any further because I'll be using buttons and I can't have that rod sticking out because it just won't sit right with the buttons. And for the buttons, I'm taking the wires and I am threading them through uh, two separate holes, but the holes that are diagonal with each other. And this will allow it to have a better balance and then I'm gluing them together. Now I'm moving on to the tulip lamp and I'm going so fast that I can't even keep up with my words. But I'm beginning to glue the beads on so they look like this. And now I will thread the wires through the top part, the little base that's gonna hold the tulip shade. I'm creating that with two bead spacers. Feeding the wire through that little base and then through the rod. Now I can glue the tulip shade onto the little base that will actually hold the shade. So this is what it's beginning to look like. And I'm just pulling that light through a little bit more so it's not hanging out of the shade. And now I'm going to begin to add the base and I'm going to do the same thing with the buttons here. When I thread the wires through the button, they'll be in their individual hole and the holes will be kitty corner from each other or diagonal from each other. And I just found that this gives it a better balance for the wires and the whole stand itself. So making sure that they're diagonal from each other and they're in their separate holes. I'm gluing these pieces together. Now I can add this button the way I explained it. It just balances out a little better than if you're putting them in holes next to each other or if you're putting them through the same hole. So I'm just gluing this button on and there is that lamp. So now I'm going to work on the light bulb and I am adding the pull chain. I pulled both wires through one of the links and they're so tiny it was like threading a needle and I'm just going to pull the chain to sit on top of the screw part or the bead spacer and then it'll just hang down. And then I'm going to dip the end after I cut the chain to the length I need it I'll just dip the end. Now I pulled out my uh, silicone molds because I want to use well I'm not sure if I'm going to but I'm thinking about creating some sort of base to sit on the ceiling that the light comes through and I haven't made up my mind on which one I want so I'm going to do two different ones and see how they work out. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm using my DOS air dry clay and I definitely want to use this daisy looking one because it kind of protrudes down which will pop out a little bit more and like project downward from the ceiling. So I definitely want to try this out. Um, in the end, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this piece. I will show you what it looks like and I'll show you what it looks like with the light through it. And uh, I just have some options to go with and we'll talk about that uh, when we get to the final viewing of this piece. So once I get these uh, pieces nice and smooth and packed down. I'm actually going to uh, create a hole in the middle so that the wire can go through the hole. So 
So this is what I'm doing. I am creating a little hole right in the middle all the way through to the other side and this will allow the wire to go through and then I'm also creating some sort of little uh, I don't even know what to call this but this will be so that the wires can lay through them and not on top of the piece so it kind of actually fits inside so it can lay flush to the top of the ceiling. Now this first piece is kind of thick so I don't know if I'll be using that. I didn't like how thick it was in the end and on the other X on the other spectrum of the scale the other piece is super thin but uh, I like it better. So now I am coating the two wires. Now this is the hanging light, the bare bulb, and I am coating the two wires with Mod Podge. This will help them keep them together and make it look like one cord. And then I'm going to paint them with copper paint to make them look like a copper wire, which will kind of uh, resemble the wire that I have attached to the wall sconce that's sitting next to the closet door already. So it'll kind of uh, go along with the wiring from them days. So after that Mod Podge is dried and I gave it two coats of Mod Podge and I just took my time to try and keep it nice and smooth so it's not very lumpy and uneven. And now I'm just painting it with the Folk Art Metallic Antique Copper and uh, let this dry as well. Now I have taped off the end and I have also rubber band the end piece to give myself a stopping point and allow enough space on the end for wire connections when I get my holders and switches. Okay, so I have painted, this is the one I chose, it's pretty thin and fragile. I have painted this white just so it doesn't look like a plaster and I'm going to brush it with my pastel brush. I'm not using the pastels. I'm just using what's left all the residue on the brush. Um, so I'm just going to brush it just to bring out some of that detail, give it a little bit more age so it's not just the flat white. It'll give it some dimension and just complete this little piece. So you won't be able to see it much now, but in the end, you will be able to see see it very well. Okay, when the copper paint was dried, I also gave that wire a wash with black acrylic and water just to age it up a little bit so it doesn't look brand new. Um, I'm trying to show you what this looks like. I'm not sure that you can see it very well, but again, you'll get a better view and be able to see that, all that detail and that shading that I just did in the end. Right now I'm going to fish the wire through the hole just to get an idea of what this is going to look like if I choose to use this piece. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and uh, give the light a go and see how that looks. So it'll lay in that little groove that I made so that it lays flat along the ceiling and this is what it looks like. The little pole chain is completed. Uh, it's actually bendable, so I can shape the wire if I'd like to. And I absolutely love this piece, tiny friends. This is exactly what my vision looked like for that room. I knew I wanted a bare bulb light. Okay, so tiny friends, the final results are in. This is the standing lamp. Now, two things. I did not add a switch or a pull chain to this light. Um, so I feel like I need to do that to make it look complete. I feel like it needs a pull chain somewhere from the top. So I'm going to add that. Um, and you'll see that when I hook these up to the connectors, you'll see that piece on there in the end. I did add some trimming around the top part. I'm still not sure how I feel about that yet. 
but overall I love this standing lamp. Uh, this will go in the back corner to light up the area behind the folding screen. So when Margot or anybody is standing behind the folding screen, they'll have some light as they're changing or getting dressed or whatever the case may be. So you can see the detail on the base with the beads that I used and I actually just flipped the button over for this one. It's the same button that I used on the tulip lamp but I just flipped it over. I feel like it needs a bigger base but uh, like I said at the po at this time I, I forgot about that bag, that huge bag of buttons. <laughs> I just used the biggest ones I had. Uh, now I did not add a switch or a chain to this lamp either and I feel like um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. Um, I'm still thinking about that but that's what it looks like. This is what the little tulip light looks like that I purchased with the leaves on it. The leaves do have a texture design, a textured design on it. And I'm just giving you a look at that. I hope you all enjoyed this video today, tiny friends. If you have, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't be afraid to give this a try. Ask me any questions you would like. If uh, you needed more information on any of this uh, stuff <laughs> that has anything to do with this project. Um, thank you all for subscribing. Don't forget to hit that like and that top bell notification button. Give it a thumbs up and I want to thank you all so much for being here with me today. This is the top piece. You can see the detail better and where I brushed it with the chalk pastels. Now, if I want to use this, I was thinking I don't really want that cord to come out, stick it out of the side. So I was thinking that I might just drill a hole in the ceiling through to the attic, leave the battery up in the attic, and then just place a box on top of that or over it so that I can change it out when I need to and also disguise it. Uh, because it's the attic, you can have a box lying anywhere. Um, so that was one of the options I was thinking about that I came up with and I hadn't come up with anything else yet. So if I decide to use this piece in the room, that's exactly what I'm probably going to end up doing. But all these lights will be placed in that back room because Margot will need plenty of light back there. This was a very inexpensive way to create your own lights and lamps for your miniature scenes. I want to thank you all once again for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. Hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. Our new edition will be here in a few weeks, so we have been preparing for that. And until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day, and I will see you all on the mini side.